Hi, here's the single board relay computer. Now the quickest way to show it running is to use the built-in demo program. So what you do is just turn it on and jump to hexadecimal address 10. Now I can hit the step button and single step through the program or hit run until it completes. Now completes means that the computer executed the halt instruction and halt stops the clock. Uh, and you definitely want to do that because it'll preserve the lives of the relays. Now I can hit this frequency button and vary the clock frequency. So right now it's at five and I can hit one through F or all different frequencies or zero means that the frequency is controlled with the knob. So I'll start out at the slowest frequency and slowly ramp it up. I'll run it again at that high frequency, it's kind of neat. So the built-in demo program is Euclid's algorithm. Eu Euclid's algorithm finds the greatest common divisor between two numbers, in this case 144 and 233, by repeatedly subtracting the lower number from the larger number until you hit zero. <laughs> um, Euclid's algorithm is pretty efficient, but for a demo program, I want, you know, I want it to run for a fairly long time. So it turns out if you take two numbers from the Fibonacci sequence, or rather two successive numbers from the Fibonacci sequence, then that makes Euclid's algorithm take the longest time. So that's, what the, that's where this 233 and 144 come from. And their greatest common divisor is one. Now we can modify the built-in program and have it try to find, you know, uh, kind of a simpler uh, greatest common divisor. So let's try 50 and 100. So the program starts at address 10, so let's go to 10. And here's hex 90 is the 144. So I'm gonna change that to 64, which is, a, which is decimal 100. Uh, I hit the deposit button, increment the address. Uh, now I'm going to change the E9, which is 233, into 32. Now let's set the address back to zero so we can monitor the, uh, the variables. And run this. It doesn't run for very long because the greatest common divisor between 64 and 32 is 32, which is 50 uh, decimal. Now, let's say you want to write your own program. How do you do it on the relay computer? Well, let's look at the instruction set architecture, and you will see that it is not much different from any other 8-bit uh, computer, for example. So I'm going to zoom in on this. This is the programming model. These are all the bits that the program gets to see and modify. So what do we have? We have an 8-bit program counter. We have 256 memory locations. And we have a carry flag. Now I have to uh, explain, each memory location has 32 bits for an instruction, but the relay computer can also read and write data to this memory, but it gets to read and write only the lower 8 bits of each of the memory locations. Now that, those 8 bits correspond to one of the instruction operand fields. And the reason for that is it allows you to make self-modifying code, which uh, we definitely take advantage of in the relay computer just to simplify the computer. Now here's the instruction itself. The upper 16 bits are control bits. So as an instruction is going through the uh, data path, these all these bits control what happens to it. This is kind of like a uh, hard, what, what they used to call a horizontally microcoded design. And by having each control bit separated out like this, instead of having 
you know, a, 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 uh, an encoded instruction set, it saves having to have an instruction decoder, which saves relays. Um, you know, the only cost is the instruction is wider, but that's fine because that's coming from the semiconductors. The lower 16 bits contain two uh, instruction operands. Basically, they are memory addresses. So, in 8 bits for uh, one memory address, 8 bits for another memory address. Although the upper 8 bits can also be, instead of being used as a memory address, can be used as immediate data. And the lower 8 bits can also be used as the target address for jumps. And that's, that's also important for self-modifying code. This is basically how we do subroutines. So what instructions do we have? So if you've never seen one of these instruction set reference charts, this is what you have. An opcode, the operation code in hexadecimal. Uh, an assembly language mnemonic. This is what you would type in assembly language. Now there's actually an assembler built into the relay computer. You plug in a USB to serial adapter and you can type in programs in basically this syntax. I'm not going to. I'm not going to show that now, but uh, you can do it. <laughs> and here's a concise description of what each instruction does. So, what instructions do you have? Very typical ones that you would find on a, any computer, right? So you have halt. Halt actually stops the clock, which you want to do to preserve the relay life. You have out. Out writes to the output port. There's a four-bit output port. So you can either copy a memory location to the output port. That's what this, these brackets mean around AA. Get, you know, AA is the, the operand field in the instruction, and we just copy the contents of that memory location to the output port, or write an immediate data. So in this case, we write the, the value in the operand field itself to the output port. In, so we can read from an input port and write its contents into one of the memory locations clear a memory location, increment a memory location, decrement a memory location, ones complement a memory location, twos complement a memory location. There's rotates, shifts, uh, very important. There's a, you know, any computer you need to be able to move data. So we have the store instruction. Store means we take, we store the left argument into the right uh, argument. So we copy, we copy the one memory location to another memory location. Or we store immediate. This means we copy what's in the operand field of the instruction directly into a memory location. What else do we have? Add, you know, add, add the two arguments and save the result on the left side. We also have add two, which is the same as add except we store the result in the right side. So th th you think of this as add the left side to the right side, store, th store the result in the right side. Add two with an immediate, so you can add a constant to a memory location. Reverse subtract, that means you subtract the left side from the right side, and in this case, you store the result in the left side. Reverse subtract two, where you store, where you subtract the left side from the right side and store the result in the right side. We also have bitwise and and bit or bit clear. It's also basically add, but with one of the arguments uh, inverted. There's a jump instruction, unconditional jump, transfer control to uh, a different memory location. Uh, a whole set of conditional branches. For example, jump if the memory location at AA is not equal to zero, then you jump to this address. This is kind of what this is saying in a concise form. If, if contents of memory address AA is not equal to zero, then jump, load the program counter with, with the B side. Also, there's a jumped subroutine. Now what this does is kind of interesting. We save the return address in some memory location, AA, and then we jump to uh, some other uh, address, uh, which is from BB. What's going on here is the way you make subroutines on the relay computer is to, at the end of the subroutine, you have a jump instruction, and you use this jump to subroutine to insert the return address into that jump instruction. This is a trick from uh, early computers, and it avoids having to have a stack. 
uh, a subroutine return stack. You can make a subroutine restart return stack, but it just is not built into the relay computer to save relays. Two more interesting instructions. There's increment and jump if the result is not equal to zero. So this is a way of making quick loops. So you know you store the negative of the loop count into some memory location, keep incrementing it, and when it when it as long as it doesn't hit zero, then loop. <laughs> now, so now we have all these instructions. Let's write a, a program with them. So I'm going to write a simple program that makes use of the I/O uh, features of the relay computer. Just a simple loop that sets an I/O bit. I have to zoom out a little bit. So this is uh, an old-style assembly language coding form and. Uh, so what we have is the uh, instruction address. This is what this is the machine code that it's going to be assembled to. Here's a label. Each address each address can have a label and the instruction. So I'll teach you how to program a semi language really quick. So first of all, we need some variables. Let's say counter, and we'll put that at address zero. Uh, a temporary variable. We'll see why that is in a minute. We'll put that at address one. Now we'll, we'll uh, here's the start of the program. You can put it anywhere in memory you want, but let's just put it at 20. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is clear the counter. Now we're going to have an inner loop, so we'll call this loop, and we'll increment the counter. Now what we need to do next is it, uh, determine if the loop is done. So we need to, to compare the counter with some value. So the way to do that is there was a, if, if you'll notice, there was a sub subtract instruction, but there was not a compare instruction that discards its uh, subtraction result. So what you have to do is just copy the counter to a temporary variable, subtract the, the final counter value that you want from it. Now if you if you reached, in this case 10, if we reached 10, that means we're done. So what we do is jump if not equal to zero temp. So if temp, if this subtraction results in temp not equaling zero, then we loop again. Okay, so this is our inner loop. Basically, we have like a little delay loop, and we can watch the counter on the seven segment display. So when we're done with the loop, what should we do? Well, let's set an output bit. We'll set it to one, and then we'll s immediately set it back to zero, and then let's repeat the whole thing. So we'll go back to begin. Okay, so now we have to assemble this. So let's write in all the addresses. That way we know for jumps what the address is going to be. And now, uh, I may fast forward this part, but now we're going, to tr we're going to translate these instructions into machine code. So first is clear. Is, uh, all right, now we have a little, a little program. Let's enter it onto the relay computer. I'm going to zoom out some more. So again, we'll set our address that we want to write to. And I'll show you a quick way to write data. So by the way, I could have made the relay computer with, with uh, traditional switches on the front panel. But having used such a computer, they're, very, they're actually very tedious. The hex entry key, keypad is much more fun. <laughs> so here we go, 48. Now if you hit, you can hit deposit, but if you hit increment, it deposits the value that we have entered and also increments the address. So that's the quick way to uh, write a whole bunch of data.
there we go. So let's set the address to zero so we can monitor the, the variables while the program is running. Now you'll notice that the decimal points are set. So let me explain that a little bit. So remember that each memory address can, can contain an instruction or data. Well, when you turn on the relay computer, all the memory addresses are loaded are, are initialized with the halt instruction. The halt instruction, besides halting the computer, it also tells the front panel interface that that memory location probably has data. Um, since only the, the low eight bits are, are used for data, we want to make the best use of the seven segment display. So at address, this is address zero, and we only show eight bits. And then this is what's in address one. This is what's in address two. This is what's in address three. You know, if there's a, if there's not a halt instruction in the memory address, then see the decimal points are off, and it means that it's showing 32 all 32 bits from address 20. All right, so let's try to run the program. It should just loop over and over again, and we should see it counting. See, this is the counter. This is a temporary variable for comparing. Here it loops. Now we should see. See up here is the output port. So every ten loops, we turn the output port on for a little while and then turn it off again. So what can we do with this output port? Well, <laughs> it's a relay computer, so the output port has relay contacts. This uh, common, uh, normally closed and normally open relay contacts. And then this right here, this is the input port, which is just a switch closure, closure. You can hook a switch up to it. But this is 12 volts from the power supply. So you can use that in combination with the, the relay contacts to power some peripheral. So let's hook up. I have this old style bell. So we can ring a bell. Let's wire this in. So here is the... Uh, Common connection is ground side, and here's a jumper for plus 12 to normally open. All right, so now let's see. Uh, let me zoom, zoom out a little bit more. Continue the program and the bell should ring. There we go. What else can I say about the relay computer? How does it work? You might want to know. So I'll show you that. So here's a block diagram, and let's go through how it works. So here's the dividing line. On this left side, these are all semiconductors, and the right side are the relays. So the relay computer is a single cycle per instruction computer. So in one cycle, there's a sequence that it goes through. So let's, let's go through that sequence quickly. So the program counter goes to one of the memory ports, which reads the 32-bit 30, the instruction to execute, and that is presented on this dark line right here. So what you have is uh, control bits that control the data flow. So what, it, what else happens with these 32 bits is the A operand is immediately connected to another memory port which reads the A data and the B operand or the B operand field from the instruction is connected to the third port which reads the B data. So the A data and the B data are the two inputs to the uh, ALU. Now we have a bunch of control bits First of all, this in bit, we can select, are we going to read from the input port or are we going to read from the memory as usual? Next is the complement bit, which inverts all the bits in the, in the A data path. On the B side, we have the enable bit, B enable, which means you know we either have zero going to the B side of the ALU or we have the, the memory that we read. Now we have the ALU, and the ALU, ALU produces the sum, including carry, and 
a bitwise AND. The AND bit selects which of those outputs we want to have. There's a, a ROR is rotate right bit. We can rotate the output of the ALU. Here's a JSR bit, which means jump to subroutine. That selects whether we're going to write the we're going to write back the ALU data as usual, or if we're we're going to take the next program counter address. So this is this is how we insert the subroutine return address into memory some, somewhere. There's condition test logic, which uses four bits. And basically, we have the negative zero and carry. Here's the carry flag over here that are used to test for various conditions. If the condition is true, then we jump to the uh, B operand. Otherwise, we uh, use the incremented program counter as the, the next instruction address. There are some bits to control the carry flag. You know, is, is the carry, are we going to use the carry flag in this instruction or not? And should we invert it? So if the carry, if we don't use the carry flag, then if we invert it, you, you insert a one. So this is one way to, to increment with the ALU. And that is about it. You know, there's, there's, you could, s this three port memory is one of the ways we use to re reduce the relay count because you'll notice that there, there's no instruction register. The instruction register is really on the semiconductor side. But you know we're already we're already cheating by using the uh, by using semiconductors for memory, so we might as well make the most of it. And this is one of the ways to do it. Now, what else can I say about the relay computer? That's kind of how it works. Let me zoom out so I can show you. You know where where are these things uh, on the board? So there are two microcontrollers. This is the main micro microcontroller right here. And this, this has the memory. And this is a keyboard and display microcontroller. The only reason I'm using two mic microcontrollers is because it lets you use these small dip packages. When the microcontroller reads from the memory, what does it do? It presents it through these serial to parallel shift registers and then through level converters. And the, this is what drives the CPU, the relay CPU. The CPU generates a result that has to get written back into memory. So these two chips are parallel to serial shift registers, which the CPU then reads the data that uh, is written back into memory.